Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together, and this is part eight of creating a beautiful inventory in GameMaker 2.3. This video is gonna be covering the function add item that we're gonna write, and that will include stackable and non-stackable items. We're gonna code it so that hopefully you won't crash your game if this gets called, even if you pass in the wrong information. We're gonna cover all of that, and this is all in 2.3, so anytime we use a function, if you're not on 2.3, just make your own script and everything else will be exactly the same. Stick around to the end of the video for details on my Game Maker course giveaway. So I'm gonna say function add item and then I can pass in the arguments right here. So that's, that's gonna be the grid and the attributes. And if you're not using 2.3, then you just do something like this. var grid equals argument zero and var attributes equals argument one. Everything else from there on out will be exactly the same. All right, let's go ahead and make sure I've got a description and arguments in here. I'm just gonna paste those there, adding an item, the DS grid and an array of the item enum attributes. So just like what we've got down here, except this will allow us to add any item to any grid. This function that we already had is only to the master list and it doesn't check as many things as we are going to check here. So I'm gonna first go into OBJ controller, create event, and I'm gonna switch my items and I'm gonna create my own DS grid here. It's gonna be zero and item dot height. And then down here, what it's gonna look like is this. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this in so we don't have to go through and type it all. But we call add item, we pass in the grid that we want, and then we pass in the array of properties that we've set up already. If you don't understand what I'm doing here, go back to the beginning of the playlist where we actually talk about what the inventory has and then how I designed it so that it works just like this. I've already got sprites for all of these and I have objects for all of these as well. And I went in and added more information on all of these objects too. So when we actually go into the inventory, you'll be able to see it a little bit better and it'll be totally functional. But besides that, I'm just gonna add all of these and you can see that I can add an amount. So uh, whew, which one is the amount? I don't actually remember. Let's go, amount is the third one here. So this is the amount. So I'm gonna add one knife, one broadsword, 13 red jelly, and then, and then I'm gonna add another knife down here, and that's what we're gonna show how to not stack items. Okay, let's go ahead, and where is that script at? Inventory, here we go. I'm gonna pull this out and just have it be its own thing. Okay, we're gonna do kind of the same thing down here. We're gonna be a little bit cautious and make sure that whatever we do, it is going to work like no matter what we do, I want it to not crash at all. So that means we're gonna do some safe coding practices, but it shouldn't add too much time to what we're doing. So first I'm gonna add a local variable called can stack, and that's gonna be equal to true. You're gonna be able to change this variable based on whatever properties you want of your inventory, I am just gonna change it so that non-consumable ones are not gonna be allowed to stack. So let's go ahead and get started on our checks. So this is gonna be the first check that we have here. Are the arguments acceptable? So this is gonna be very similar to what we already did down here. So we're gonna check to see if the DS exists first, so grid and it is of type ds type grid. And if it is not that, then I'm gonna show message, no grid found, and return before we try and do anything else. I'm also gonna say if our attributes is not an array, so if it equals false, or array length, and if you're not using 2.3, this will be array length 1D. If array length of our attributes does not equal item.height, then we have passed in the wrong number. Uh, wrong attributes. And we'll return from that as well. Second check. Is this item in the master list? 
So one of the things that you could do to make adding items significantly faster is in the controller, you could just have a script that says like find item and just type in the name small knife and then it would pull the rest of this out of there, which would make a lot more sense and be much safer when you're actually adding items. I'm not doing it here just because that's one extra step that you don't need. I do cover that kind of adding items in my advanced course, which you can find on my website but I'm not gonna worry about it here because this works good enough for now. But I do want to make sure that when we add an item in, that it is in the master list, because if it's not, then we might have problems later on if we ever have to check that. So I'm gonna say var is in master list is equal to false for var i is equal to zero, i is less than ds grid width global dot all items plus plus i, and then if global dot all items, so hashtag i, and we're gonna compare the item name here, is equal to attributes item dot name. If we find it in there, then is in master list will become true. And if it's true, then we are good to go. But if it's not true, then we're gonna return out of there. So if is in master list is equal to false, show message cannot find this item. And we're gonna return. Are you ready so to start check. making the game of your dreams? Then head on over to letslearnistogether.com to check out my trilogy of courses to take you from beginner to expert. Game development is hard and frustrating when you're going at it alone and you don't have anyone to turn to. Join me on the journey and I'll be with you every step of the way to alleviate all of that frustration. And by the end, you'll be ready to make any game you can set your mind to. Go ahead and get started now at letslearnistogether.com. All right, third one. This is gonna be, can it stack? Now, here's an important note, is that you probably already saw it when I showed you in the beginning, is that some items can stack and some cannot. But what happens if you pass in an item in an amount more than one that's not allowed to stack? Well, you're gonna to have to actually break that item up for each item that's in there and just call add item again. And so we'll come back and tackle this after we finish this whole script. If it can stack, we'll set it equal to true, and if it's not allowed to, we'll set it equal to false. And the way I'm doing that is just checking attributes, item.type doesn't equal type.consumable. Here you can have any kind of arbitrary requirement for it being allowed to stack, or you can actually add it in the inventory itself, like as a item property, and just check that. So if it's not allowed to stack because it's a consumable, then I'm just gonna say can stack equals false. And then fourth check, is it already in the grid? Now this is one that can easily be forgotten, but if it's allowed to stack and it's in there, then you wanna put it in. You don't wanna just add it in as a new item. So this is going to be, if it's already in there, we will just increase the amount. So if it can stack, then we're gonna do a for loop. If our i is equal to zero, i is less than ds grid width of the grid we passed in, increase i by one. If attributes item.name is equal to grid i item.name. So if we're able to find in the inside of our grid, if we're able to find the same named item, so if you have the same name of items, but they're different, this would cause a problem. You might wanna come up with some other unique identifiable characteristic of your item, but it's in here, so add one, or add amount to item in grid. So grid, hashtag I, item dot amount, plus equals attributes, item dot amount. And then just make sure to put return here and that will be all good to go. And then fifth check, not in the grid, so add it. Here we just do almost the, actually we do the same thing that we do right down here. We just don't do the global all items, but I'll type it out just in case you're here and you just wanna know how to add items. So 
DS grid resize. We're going to resize our grid that we passed in. And we get the DS grid width of our grid, add one to it. DS grid height of our grid. Now it's resized. Now we do another for loop. I is less than array length 1D, oh, array length <laughs> attributes plus plus I. And then we just copied over one line at a time. So grid, DS grid width of our grid minus one I equals attributes I. And now we are adding in items in our controller. We've already set my items to here and we're adding it there. That's all we have to do. Let's run the game. And now we have our own items. And you can see that we have two knives here. We can move things around. We do have an amount, but we can't actually see that. So let's go ahead and add that in. And that is actually gonna be inside of our draw event. We're gonna do that here and come on up right after we're drawing the sprite. I want to draw the amount over top of it. So this is gonna be amount. We're gonna set the color to C white. We're gonna set the alpha to one. We're gonna set the font to font smaller. And then we're just gonna draw the text at item X minus 16, item Y plus four. And we just draw the amount. So my items, hashtag I, item dot amount. And then let's go ahead and test it out. We should now be able to see the amount and voila. Here are our knives and our sword, which are not allowed to stack but we do have one here. And I did mention this, and I said I wasn't gonna do it, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it. I just wanna make sure that my idea is correct. So if you try to pass in something that is not allowed to stack in an amount more than one, here is what you're gonna have to do. First, you gotta check to see if that amount is greater than one. Because if it is, we need to do a for loop. So if our i is equal to zero, i is less than attributes, item dot amount, increase I, and then you just call add item again. Now, the tricky part here is that you actually have to pass in the array, but you have to make sure you only pass in one, not just the whole attributes again, otherwise you'll be stuck in an endless loop. So you gotta pass in attributes, item dot name, attributes, item dot sprite, one for the amount, because you're gonna pass in the correct amount for this for loop, you just pass in one at a time. Attributes, item.type, attributes, item.price, and attributes, item.object. And that needs to all be inside of an array. And if we run that now, it'll work. So we passed in 20 staves, and there they are. Now, they're over here because we didn't uh, go all the way when we're drawing items. You can see here that I know how many I'm supposed to draw for the first six and then the next six, but I didn't actually set this up over here correctly. Now, well, then we gotta come in here and we have to set item X equals camera, camera X plus 81 plus I minus menu width times two times item separation item Y equals camera Y plus, and each time we just add 36, so it's gonna be 183. If we run this, then more of the staffs will show up properly. And as you can see, they are all split up correctly. So there's still more like off screen and I can keep, well actually, yeah, why not? Let's go ahead. Uh, I actually have all of these right there. I can just copy and paste them because we're gonna be using this exact same system uh, for when we lock down items. I don't know why there's so many vars here because we don't need to recreate it every single time. But this will display all of the items properly that you can ever have. There'll only be one slight problem is that at the end of it, well, we've got 20 of those and three of those. That's how many we actually have. Then we gotta come down here and inside of this if statement, right after the for loop, we have to call return so that we don't actually add the one that has that large amount. And that will take care of that. So now we have 
is the ability to add as many individual items as we want. And there we go. The next thing we're going to tackle is actually limiting the amount of items that you are allowed to have. So right now, we can have as many here, but in some games, you can increase your inventory or decrease it based on weight or anything in your game. So I'm going to show you how we can limit the amount of inventory that we can have and how to easily increase it with just one line of code. We're going to tackle that in the next video. On every Game Maker tutorial and video I put out from here into the future, I'm going to be giving away one copy of my beginner game developer course, a great way to go from no programming experience to be able to make your own games. To be entered to win, just like the video and leave a comment showing me your keyboard works. You can leave a comment about anything. A week after the video is posted, I will send you a message with the coupon. If you want, you can use it for yourself, give it to a friend, or apply it towards a more expensive course by just sending me an email and letting me know that's what you'd like to do. If you want to see more content from me, then subscribe and ring the bell to be notified every time I put out a new video. But that's all I've got for you. So thank you so much for joining me. And as I always say, keep making, keep learning and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.